every young person has dreams and aspirations growing up. They always look forward for the time when they'll be free from their parents and they can fly on their own like eagles. And always this is at the university where they're always looking forward to find fun, freedom and fulfillment. They end up consuming each other rapidly in the act of love without knowing its actual meaning. And it's only until they get pregnant or infected with HIV that it dawns on them that mm, freedom comes at a price. Now, the question is, where do we go from here? Machaya Immaculate, a peer supporter at Mulago ISS Clinic, and also a, a chairperson at YGA. Uh, YGA stands for Young Generation Alive. It's a psychosocial group for young people at Muji. Um Peer supporters, what as we peer supporters do, we talk to young people, we advise them, we encourage them to take their medication, yeah, and think positively. Young people have many challenges like stigma and discrimination, uh, pill burden. Uh, stigma and discrimination go hand in hand, like whereby people isolate you, they don't want to talk to you, they don't want to eat with you, they don't want to share anything with you. Um, my HIV story is I was born with HIV and I got to know about my status when I was 11 years old. My mom disclosed to me and it wasn't pretty easy. <laughs> it wasn't quite easy because uh, I had stigma. I had, I had self-stigma and uh, also um, external stigma around the people in the village. So it wasn't, it wasn't that easy because um, I remember there was a time I, I got suicidal thoughts. I wanted to take my life because I'd always judge, judge my parents. Why would they, you know, uh, infect me with the virus? Yeah, so it's not been easy, but I'm so grateful to God that I finally collected myself and I'm empowering young people out there and uh, I'm helping them to accept themselves, to love themselves and appreciate themselves the way they are. Because as, at the end of the day, it's you. You, 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 it's not going to change, you know. You have HIV and it's not going to change. So what is next? To move on with life and live a positive life. Oh. Young people who have stigma usually isolate themselves. Like those who have been going to school, they can decide even not to go to school. They don't want to pray with others. Uh, every time you see they are sad. So when we bring their peers, who are also HIV positive. They share their experiences, how they have gone through stigma. Then these people really try to cope up and accept their status. Um, my school life was a bit also smooth. I didn't get so many challenges apart from the point when I received a stigma because of sharing my story in media. So people, uh, my classmates learned about my status and I was a bit stigmatized. I actually had to change school. After that, I think that is uh, the biggest challenge that I faced throughout my school life. Now, for the pill burden is when uh, the pills are big or the pills are many. According to this, young people really find difficulty taking the pills because there are many and uh, it's huge and they get fed up taking it every day. It's a continuous process, you know. So it's hard for them to 
continue doing the same thing over and over again. At campus, the challenge that I faced was taking medication during my lecture classes because I was taking an evening pill and I was doing an evening course. So 10 p.m. would sometimes I find me in a lecture room and you know, social sciences, students can be so many in a hall, you know, so many. And then you, it's 10 p.m., you have to take your medication. You're like, oh, what should I do? And I, th I thank God because at that point I used to have a PK peeling, so I would get my tablet. Thank God it was small in size. I would get my tablet, get it into the PK covering and then move around with the bottle. So when it would be time for my medicine, I would just get it out so I'll not take water. And if anyone asked me for chewing gum, I'll tell them it's done, cause you know, I would work with only one in, in, the, in, the, in the covering. So, I mean, that's how I managed uh, my campus life. And yeah, now I'm here working. People really who are newly tested, the adherence is not good. When they start on treatment, it is not easy because of side effects then some people will tell you because of pill but then they are not used of taking drugs every day so adherence may not be easy even stigma they have not disclosed uh, like if you find someone is married at home the, uh, the partner is not aware of her hiv status so they try to hide and you find adherence is not really good uh, with ongoing counseling so far we have seen an improvement as I told you, at first it is not easy, but we continue with ongoing counseling. That's why adherence counseling in art is very important. If someone cannot be on art without counseling, they will not adhere. But with counseling, it really helps them to improve. And even those people who have been on art for a long time, sometimes they have challenges. Some will tell you, I don't have money to come for my drugs. Others will tell you, you know, I didn't have food, so I did not take my drugs. Uh, such challenges really make them to default from taking their drugs. So we, of course, even us as counselors, we cannot really provide food. We don't provide money. When someone tells you, I cannot take my drugs without food, you have nothing to do. But we try our best to provide counseling and see maybe we give information on income generating activities, on how they can maybe get some small money for food to make sure that they really take their drugs. Here at Muji, we help young people get some skills so that they can help them financially and economically, like tailoring, paper bag making, soap making. Through these activities, they know how to get some income and have their life of their own apart from taking medication. Um, we have young mothers in YGA and normally they would feel out of place if they are with other young people who are not of the same category. So we have a group for young mothers, it's called Mama Papa Group. Uh, we, they learn, of course, the skills I talked about, the tailoring, soap making. So they do all these crafts and yeah, they, and they sell them and get some income which can help them financially. Counseling is very challenging. Young people prefer sometimes older counselors to talk to. Some of them underestimate us because we are age mates. That's one of our challenges I've got. Uh, another thing is they disrespect sometimes disrespect us. Um, apart from that, not really, there's no big challenge. Because if I get a problem with a patient, I can easily go and refer to an older counselor to help me out. Uh, young people are entering into relationships. If you know your status and you, and you really want to, you really like someone, I think disclosure is the best to disclose to someone so that they know you and they can accept you because if they don't know who you are, what your status is, it's going to be a very tough relationship. One of the hardest things is to encourage someone who has got HIV positive results. I remember I had a friend who I grew up with and one day she decided to go for an HIV test. And I went with her for emotional support 
she was very tensed up during that time of waiting for the results. She was very tensed up. She was pacing around. She wasn't herself. And worst of it all, the results came back positive. I didn't know how to talk to her. I didn't know how to encourage her at that time. I was worried about her. Uh, she didn't want to eat. She isolated herself. At some point, I thought she made commit suicide. It was a really difficult time. But having gone to counseling sessions and trainings I've gone for, I picked up myself. I talked to her, encouraged her, and she picked up, started taking her medication slowly by slowly, and I'm glad she's okay.